Hey friends, it's Rodney Lewis Boyd here. Haven't done a video in a while. Man, it's hot out here on this deck. And as soon as I get done with this video, I'm going inside the cool house. This uh, video is brought to you by Rodney Lewis Boyd Services. How may I serve you? Uh, and we're promoting the book, How to Live a Maximized Life. These hardcover books normally run on Amazon $28. But I checked in and they're now going, you can get one or five for $7 a piece. That's such a great deal. And uh, I encourage you to please buy my book so my Emerson can have a Merry Christmas. I'm kidding. Today I want to talk to you about <clears throat> walking out the land, the parameters of the land that God gave you. I wrote a letter to someone and their family about, uh, it's called the range of blessing. And, uh, and as I was writing it, uh, it dawned on me that this was to me and whosoever who have been walking in the wilderness for quite a while but the Lord has spoke to you like he spoke to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 1 uh, you've been around this mountain long enough it's time to get up and move and so <clears throat> Brenda used to pray and she probably still does but I, I remember her praying this for years that the Lord would bless every place that she put her foot in our foot uh, she got that from Deuteronomy 11 23 or uh, and also Joshua 1 3 when the children of Israel had finished their 40 year journey of disobedience and were about to cross over into the promised land the parameters of their land was found in Joshua 1, 3 and Deuteronomy 11, 24. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I, God, have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory now the question is are you walking or just talking to move your feet on the land you got to be going as I ruminated on this verse in conjunction with my friend and myself I recalled what a lady told me when I first started my speech journey after I graduated from school. So you, Rodney Boyd, Rodney Lewis Boyd, will find favor and good report in the sight of God and man. Proverbs or Proverbs 3, 4. This favor and good report is hinged on staying in the word, keeping your focus, and here's a little extrapolation of uh, Proverbs 3 uh, and how uh, you can uh, get in this good favor and report with God and man. And also some other benefits. You know God has a benefit package. Psalm 103, 1 and 2, where it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, or soul, start blessing the Lord. And, and by the way, soul, don't forget any, no, not one of his benefits one, deliver you from the pit. Two, heals all your diseases. On and on and on, one through five. So, <clears throat> number one, do not forget my teaching. This is the father teaching his son, but we know that Father God teaches us, his son, his daughters, his children. Don't forget the teachings. Sometimes we look at the teachings like it says in James. We look at the word, we see it. We agree with it. We turn around, we walk away and forget the word. Well, don't forget the teachings. Number two, let 
or allow your heart to keep my commandments. That's the cause and effect will be length of days and years of life and peace will be added to you. Now, if you choose to allow your heart not to keep the commandments or forget the teachings, well, I guess you can kiss the length of days and years of life and peace goodbye because this is called cause and effect. Number three, do not let or allow kindness and truth to leave you. Why don't you just be kind to somebody? Be a good person. Don't let God's kindness and truth disappear. Always keep them close to you. Number four, bind them, kindness and truth, around your neck. Write them, kindness and truth, on the tablet of your heart. To me, this is a great scripture memorization. Write it on the tablet of your heart. With the cause and effect being, you're going to find favor and good report with God, number one, and also man, with human beings in your endeavors. I found for 31 years, I took that verse to heart that that lady gave me. I remember when she spoke it to me. It was in the early days of the Ruminator Sunday School class. It wasn't even called the Ruminators then. It's called the Wild Kingdom. Back in the uh, Fellowship Hall, which is, uh, had a fireplace in it at Smyrna Assemblies. And uh, I remember her standing there telling me this, and I took it to heart. Number five, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Sometimes people say, well, I'm trying. I just keep trying. Well, quit trying and start trusting. You'll see that there's a big difference. Number six, do not lean on your own understanding. Man, can you imagine leaning against a, a big brick column? And, and and that's your understanding. And all of a sudden, the whole column tips over. Guess where you're going? You're going with the column. You're going to be under the bricks with no understanding. In all your ways, that means everything you do, acknowledge him. He will make your path straight. The children of Israel, uh, released from Egypt, from slavery, from bondage, set out to go to the promised land. It was going to be an 11 day journey, according to Deuteronomy, an 11 day journey. God took them the long way around to avoid warfare. So when they faced war, they wouldn't turn back to bondage. So he took them 11 days, but it ended up to be a 40 day fiasco. Why? They did not acknowledge him in all their ways. Their path would be straight into the promised land, but no, for 40 years, <laughs> circling around, take another lap around Mount Sinai. Mm. Fear the Lord, turn from evil, with the cause and effect being healing of your body and refreshment to your bones. Wow. Number 10, honor the Lord from your wealth that will be provided for from your favor with God and man, your clients or your work or your side hustle, your MSI, multiple sources of income. And from the first produce, not after you paid all your bills, start with 10% and then give as directed with the cause and effect being your barns or your bank accounts will be filled and your vats or your savings will overflow with new wine. You know, I got married in 1972 and since 1972 until 2022, Brenda had a ledger, a budget book, and she's kept all those budget books are up in my attic now or our attic and all the way from 72 and the first thing that always came out was a tithe 10 percent because we were taught that's the way to do it and we just wanted to do the right thing but it's a great starting place uh 10 percent uh and for 50 years we've never missed a meal never missed paying a bill uh, always had 
and I'm convinced it's because we gave. Now, personally, I think tithing is an Old Testament principle. Jesus said, oh, all right, now when you tithe, he's talking to the Jews, you know, don't tithe tooting your own horn. But I believe as New Testament believers, we are released from the tithe and released into offerings, giving. You know, like Ananias and Sapphira, they sold some land. These were good Jews, and they gave half of it. Peter called them with the Holy Ghost and said, Why'd you lie? Why, why did you keep back some of it and say you gave it all? Wasn't it yours to begin with? And that's how money works. It's ours. We do what he says. I really think tithing is a good starting place and then get right on into the giving. Final thoughts, finally. I don't know. Uh, I did not know that this letter would turn out into all of this and uh, it's turning into this video now. I want you, if you're listening and you're taking to heart everything that we're talking about in Psalm 3, I want you to be blessed. Now, some people will think being blessed is some kind of mealy mouth. Oh, I hope, you know, and then you need to suffer and yada, yada, yada. But in the Amplified Bible, when Jesus is teaching on blessing, uh, the, the just the first uh, verse of the blessings, he said, be blessed. This is what it meant in the Amplified. Supremely happy. Not sad, not moaning and groaning and whining and grumbling and vetching be supremely happy so as to be envied by others as they see your life joy and salvation people are looking at you and when they see you being blessed oh mama they want what you got i like that song by uh, the newsboy shine let them uh, want what you got. That's not holding in front of them and saying, nanny, nanny, boo, boo, this is what I've got. You don't have it. No, it, it encourages them. Say, well, if it works for a booger head like Rodney Boyd, I better, I better work for me. Be supremely happy so as to be envied by others as they see your life joint salvation regardless of of your circumstance, good, bad, or ugly. You're blessed. That's what Paul's talking about in Philippians uh, 4, where he said, where he said, um, don't speak from want. Don't start complaining about what you don't got. Quit speaking from want or what you don't have. He had learned the secret, how to be content in whatever circumstance he was in. And when you read things like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's based on money right there. It works for everything, I'm convinced. But initially, it's in the context of having or not having and how to have contentment no matter what you got. That's blessing. Can I get an amen on that? So, in closing, $7 for a hardback book. Wow, I'm thinking about ordering five for myself. How to Live a Maximized Life. The original title of this was How to Live a Maximized More Than Conqueror, Overcoming, Victorious, Blessed, prosperous, successful lifestyle. The publishers had good sense. It's too long. So my artist for the company that did this cover kind of laid them up in the background. Successful, overcoming, abundant, more than conqueror, prosperous lifestyle. I believe that's what the will of God is for us. Hey, check this out. Oh, choose wisely, my friends. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. 
thank you for an abundant lifestyle. I thank you for a lifestyle that's more than enough. Mm, Lord, I thank you uh, for a lifestyle of peace, wholeness, and rest, not split and divided with anxiety, worry, and tension, and fear. And so I pray for my brothers and sisters that are in these last days of the pandemic of fear, fueled by systemic uh, sin, uh, manifested with systemic hate, <clears throat> that's wrapped around the world's minds and hearts. I thank you that we live differently when we trust God and renew our minds with the Word. And I'll, I'll close with this too. I do, every time I speak, I, I, I tend to do this. <sighs> Proverbs 27.3 As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Luke 6.45 Out of the abundance or overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. James uh, 2.17, the Weymouth translation. Uh, faith without corresponding actions is of none effect. If you want an effectual manifestation of God's grace and favor in your life, then you need to start watching what you think, watching what you speak, and watching how you act. That will change your life. I'm not talking about salvation. Salvation, free gift, <clears throat> death, burial, resurrection, nothing more, nothing less. For by grace have you been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, lest anyone brag about it or boast. Titus, uh, that's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Titus 3, 5. He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. By the, say it, mercy. Say it like you're on Bill Street with the rib dripping down. Mercy. <laughs> he saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done, uh, but by his uh, mercy, washing our regeneration, renewing by the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> That's how it works. That's how it works. In the name of Jesus, amen.